Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator, and really this is a short video to simply say how much my my loins have been awakened to, to the Langmesser and and what a wonderful thing it is. And I've for many years I have known people. This is the the Landsknecht Emporium. Was that a better pronunciation? I hope so. The Landsknecht Emporium. I have so much problems with that word. Um, it is their uh, version of the um, of the one-handed one that they sent me so you will have seen the previous video where I showed um, the three uh, messes three types of messes they've sent me and that there are proper reviews of these coming up but really um, to note from a personal point of view that I have been awakened to the Langmesser. Now I've, I've known people for years who have studied the sources associated with this weapon whether it be Codex Wallerstein um, someone like Bart Valchak or um, whether it's something like Le Kuchner, various people studying that, uh, Martin Enzi for example, um, or, or the various other, you know, Tauhofer and all of the other treatises where th this type of sword appears. Um, but for some reason it's never quite captured me and I think part of that is probably because I've never been very close or deeply entrenched with the uh, medieval German treatises. I've always focused on Italian uh, medieval and Renaissance treatises and then obviously later period stuff. But when you actually think about it, for those of you who watch my channel and know me, uh, you will know that one thing I love is sabres and another thing I love is bowie knives. Now let's just contemplate this sword here. It's almost like the marriage between two of my favourite types of swords set in the medieval period, isn't it? So it's basically a 15th century version of a giant bowie knife sword sabre thing. Uh, and this one is straight, you might be thinking, but some of them are slightly curved, so they are basically kind of like proto sabres. <clears throat> and um, the thing that I wanted to also note was that the, um, <clears throat> the Langmesser treatises feed into, or kind of um, almost morph into, the slightly later period Dusak um, sources, the Dusak being a wood or leather kind of practice on maybe probably sometimes metal, um, Messer-like weapon. Um, and it is described in some sources as being the practice weapon for all one-handed swords. Um, but basically a Dusak can also be a sharp sword as well and it's sort of related to the Messer, um, but usually with shorter hilts and usually with some form of hand protection but clearly a related weapon. And what I really wanted to note, um, again, short video, but what I wanted to note was it also makes sense for me to be looking at Dusak sources because it connects to my love of all things Sabre, but it also connects it to the medieval sources because there is a sort of lineage, there is a sort of connection between the Langmesser sources, then the Dusak sources, than the Sabre sources. And in many ways, if we look at Dusak method, of course, it's, you know, 16th, 17th century. So um, some of the footwork and stances and guard positions, stuff like this are related to swordsmanship of that period. But actually, if you look at Dusak sources, there are also a lot of parallels to be made with Sabre method. Um, we do start to see things that look like lunges and we do see um, so, sort of um, some of the parrying positions and uh, the way that cuts are given that look quite like uh, Sabre stuff. And I genuinely believe that there is a relationship there between later kind of backsword and Sabre method uh, that we see in the sort of 17th and 18th centuries and Dusak method that we see in the 16th and 17th centuries. So I'm going to finish up there but really just to say that I don't know why it took me 20 years of HEMA to become awakened uh, to the to the Mesa as it were um, but I've really got to thank for that largely uh, the Landsknecht uh, Emporium for sending me this one um, and it being such a lovely thing in the hand and feeling just so lively and uh, nice and looking awesome, um, like a giant bowie knife sword, um, for really awakening me to that part of my um, <laughs> awakening urges in me that I didn't know that I had. So uh, there we go. I'm going to be personally looking a little bit more at Messer and Dusak sources as well now um, and looking at them in a slightly new way. And sometimes, you know, what we choose to study in terms of HEMA or any other martial arts is actually can sometimes be awakened 
driven by the fact that we like the way something looks. And I don't think it's any coincidence that a lot of people study longsword because longswords look awesome. Um, and you know, I don't think we should be ashamed of that and shy away from that. You know, if something if something captures your imagination and you think it's aesthetically pleasing, you're more likely to sort of get into it and study that thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you really soon for another video. And if you're interested in where you can get awesome messes like this from, see the link below this video. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.